Stellar Blade has been under attacked ever since the teasers and trailers for it released, and while gamers are extremely excited for this title to finally launch, there are some individuals in the media who have been melting down over it, and now, of course, the Mary Sue has put out an article saying Stellar Blade's design isn't the problem, it's how creepy men are being about it. I have a few things to show off, but before we get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, follow me on social media, and consider supporting through Patreon or through YouTube memberships. Now, of course, I don't ever take anything the Mary Sue says seriously, but when they put out articles like this, it really infuriates me because there are people who view them as a credible source, as a credible set of journalists. When that is not the case, they are activists first and foremost, but it says a new action-adventure game Stellar Blade is on its way to, to release for PlayStation 5. However, controversy over the game has arisen due to men being creepy about the lead character Eve. I have seen absolutely no other journalists say that it's men's fault that this game is getting attention, because surprisingly, a lot of the journalists within the industry are kind of praising this game because they see the overwhelmingly positive reception to it. They see the gamers are extremely excited for this game and they are desperate for relevancy. They are desperate to continue holding on to their jobs. And even though they're talking about things, of course, like Sweet Baby Inc. and defending Sweet Baby Inc., when it comes to Stellar Blade, um, they've actually been relatively positive. Now, as we are getting closer to release, we're getting more articles, uh, you know, put out like this, but it's not men's fault for appreciating this female character. It's the fact that this one specific individual, Rachel, is personally offended by this design. But instead of just admitting, hey, I really don't like this design, I don't think that she looks very good, they're blaming men for some of the negative reception to it. Of course, it says men being creepy about female characters is nothing new. It is not creepy to appreciate beauty. Video games are a form of art, and art is meant to be appreciated. I have absolutely no problem with looking at an attractive female or male character and saying how beautiful and attractive they look, and that should not make me a creep. It should not make you a creep, but to these individuals, all gamers are terrible, so they want to label us as awful things as often as possible, and this is just their newest way to do so. It says the hypersexualization of women in media from TV to movies to video games is a decades-old ongoing issue. Um, yes, sexual appeal sells. People want to see things that are abnormally beautiful. It's like the developers for this game, specifically um, Shift Up's director, actually came out and said they made the characters in this game look as beautiful as possible because they didn't want to look at characters that look like themselves. They wanted to see a form of heightened beauty within their game, and that is clearly something that a lot of gamers agree with and want to see, judging by the fact that Stellar Blade pre-orders, as we've heard so far, are extremely positive. And most of the reception to this game has been positive, except, again, for the activists who are melting down over it. It says, though, however, it is especially a problem in video games, as it's estimated about 61% of those working in the gaming industry are male. Additionally, although it has been found that women now make up about half of the gaming community, there are misconceptions that gamers are still predominantly male. Hence, from Lara Croft to Bayonetta, women in video games have consistently been heavily sexualized to appeal to men, but it's not just to appeal to men, it's also to appeal to women. And first of all, it should not be bad if you have a target audience and that happens to be men, and then men end up wanting to see beautiful women in games, but I am a woman, and I love Lara Croft, I love Bayonetta, I love Eve from Stellar Blade, and I haven't even gotten to play the game as her so far. There are men and women who want to see you know, heightened beauty, and that should not be a negative thing. It says, though, fortunately in recent years, video games have done better at portraying women in a more balanced way. I'm also fine with seeing women in games and men in games that do look average, and I do think that there are situations where you're playing and, yes, they're, you know, 
ugliness, basically, is a big part of their character story. Look at someone like Brienne of Tarth in Game of Thrones. She was not conventionally attractive. She was made fun of a lot, but that made her a stronger character, and she was a very well-written character, and we're not even going to talk about what they did to her in the show, but at least, you know, the fact that she was not beautiful was part of her character story, but people still love her because she's a well-written character. But it should not be a problem when you have characters that are the most beautiful a character could be. That shouldn't be a problem. And if Rachel here was simply putting out an article talking about how she personally wasn't the biggest fan of Eve's design, that would be fine as it's clearly her take, but that's not what she's doing. This is an article that should be written to target gamers as a general population to read, but clearly it's attacking a large majority of gamers because she's only focusing in on her audience, which are raging feminists, and in no way is that A, going to help her get her message out to people that might disagree, or B, help the Mary Sue Gray its platform. You can respectfully disagree with people's opinions, and she certainly isn't doing that. And of course, they mention how they believe the industry has had problems in the past with how developers portray women, but they are completely ignoring the fact that a reason why Stellar Blade is receiving so much positive attention right now is because for so many years, we saw women in video games that were toned down intentionally by developers who basically just are focused on DEI and they don't want to be cancelled so they're following the trend which is to not have, um, you know, feminine women in video games and we've still gotten some here and there but there's definitely been a drastic decrease and that is another reason why people are very excited for Stella Blade and that's not even mentioning about how fantastic the gameplay looks how cool the world looks all of the lore that they've already given us through the small presentations that we've gotten leading up to release. Like, of course, they're just hyper-focusing on what they perceive as a problem with her character design, but this looks like a very good game from head to toe. It's articles like this why the Mary Sue is not relevant and why the Kotakus and the Polygons and the gamers have fallen off with their audiences because they try to, of course, attack gamers, but they also still need our viewership, and this is, of course, why Gamergate happened in the first place. I know there's been a lot of talk about Gamergate because of Sweet Baby Inc., but Gamergate was originally about journalistic integrity, and articles like this and this cycle that these journalists go through just prove that, really, since Gamergate originally happened, the industry has not changed all that much, and these journalists act the same exact way that they used to, and, of course, as we get closer to Stellar Blades release. I'm sure we are going to see many more articles attacking it, but I am very excited for this title's release. I know so many of you are as well, and I will be streaming it at launch. I'm very hyped for it, but of course, articles like this are completely absurd. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.